Good evening. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for to today's roundtable, Women in White Coats Breaking the grass, Glass Ceiling. As you know, it has been noted in the past couple of years that women, not just in the medical field, but in every field, is excelling themselves. Tonight, we want to feature three of our alumni who are proving this without a doubt that they know where they're going, they're focused, and they're getting there. We look forward to hearing from you. If you have questions for the alumni, please just type it in the page. My name is Par Prem Kumar, and I'm advisor to the president at the American University of Antigua. Tonight's discussion, Women in White Coats, provides us with a unique opportunity to spotlight the dedication, the focus, and the hard work of the AUA trained women doctors. We are indeed very proud of our alumni and their endeavors. September is recognized by the American Medical Association as Women in Medicine Month. And we are indeed proud of all our women graduates who are becoming influential women and leaders in their respective fields. We're very excited to introduce you to our alumni, but before that, just a little bit of housekeeping. If you have any questions, please just type it in. I will bring it up to the alumni during the conversation. Now let's meet our alumni, shall we? First, I'd like to introduce you to our 2013 graduate, Dr. Shruti Murali. Dr. Murali is currently an oncology fellow at St. Joseph's. Shruti, tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm uh, Shruti Murli, and um, I actually completed my oncology uh, training at University of uh, Maryland, uh, the downtown or the shock trauma campus. And I'm currently a practicing physician at a satellite hospital at, affiliated with University of Maryland Medical Center. Um, St. Joseph's Medical Center in the suburbs of Baltimore. You are specialized in oncology, am I right? Yes, hematology and oncology. Wonderful, welcome. And now we have another graduate of ours, Natasha Dave. Dr. Dave, tell us about yourself. Sure. Um, I graduated from ICASA 2009 um, and then entered AUA shortly after. I was one of those rare breeds that went directly from high school to ICASA. Um, and I, I decided to go that route because my sister had done the same. Um, so I graduated AUA in 2013. Um, I did my residency at a small community hospital in Chicago before going to uh, Houston, where I did my fellowship in nephrology. After I finished my fellowship in nephrology, I joined faculty uh, with Baylor for a couple of years before moving to Florida. Currently, um, I work with a startup company called Strive Health that really deals with kidney care coordination. I'm their medical director and kind of oversee care. So happy to tell you more about it as we Go on. Yes, wow. I mean, that that's really in a nutshell, but yes, thank you. And then lastly, we have with us Dr. Ravani Dhaliwal. Actually, she's Ravani Baines now. Am I right, Ravani? Okay. Um, and she is a medical director, and recently she's been named in the Forbes Next Thousand. So we're indeed extremely proud that, oh my God, our alumni is the Forbes Next Thousand. Congratulations on that, Ravneet. And could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, thank you for that introduction, Par. That was, that was very kind of you. Um, so my name is Ravneet Haliwal, and I graduated um, with, the, with the UA in 2010. So it's, it's been a very long time. And, um, and after graduation, I finished my pediatrics residency in Baltimore, in Sinai, Baltimore, and then went on to work at a community uh, PEDS ER 
a hospital for, for up to four or five years and then started my own pediatric urgent care, which uh, we turned into peds and adults. Uh, we were just so loved by the community that we had to expand our dose to all our parents. Did that and um, now I have two locations. So kind of managing it, love seeing my peds and yeah, just, you know, taking it all in. Fabulous. Gosh, that's definitely an achievement. You know, two, now two clinics. Good Lord. Yes, uh, indeed. You know, this, this is exactly what we are trying to portray tonight, that you, you are a doctor, you, you love your patients, the patients love you, but you all are reaching far beyond. And that's exactly what we would need from our doctors in the community. You know, you're just not, not just an MD with just one speciality. You are there to give. And that's what that's the message really that I want to convey to people watching tonight. Uh, you know, medicine is not just where you get your MD and you're done and that's it. You know, it's it's way beyond that. So I'm going to this is going to be a free flowing conversation. So I I'm going to ask questions. Please chip in whatever you feel. Please share whatever information you feel comfortable sharing. Uh, you know, this is this is going live. So, yes, whatever you feel. So let me ask you, Natasha, I know your sister also went to school with us, but do you know when your passion for the medical field started? Yeah, um, I think my passion for the medical field started uh, pretty early on. I grew up in a small town in California and um, we have a very tight knit Indian community. Right. Um, so growing up, you know, Indians are, <laughs> Yes. you know, either engineers or doctors, right? right. So, uh, all my parents' friends were engineers and doctors. And so, um, you know, talking to the aunties and uncles that I grew up with, they always, you know, seemed really content with what they yes. were doing and they seemed really happy doing it. And so um, I was just kind of enamored with, um, with uh, you know, being a physician uh, because of that. And also, you know, my big sister, she is a huge inspiration for me. She's the smartest person I know. Um, she decided that she wanted to go pursue medicine. And I, you know, that kind of just facilitated my interest a little bit more. Um, but it really just started at home, started wonderful in our community. And, and you're absolutely right. And I'm sure Ravneet and Shruti can, uh, you know, agree with you. Yes, you're either an engineer or you do your uh, <laughs> IAS and IAS and whatever, or or you you know become a doctor. There aren't really too many options available, but uh, that's really great. And uh, Shruti, uh, let me let me ask you: did, did you have any role models when you were growing up? Yeah, my um, my dad was a big role model for me. Um, he was an ENT surgeon in India, and I just grew up with him bringing, you know, in India, you can bring the patients home and set up a clinic at home. Um, so sometimes he would just have me come and look in people's ears and be like, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was just fascinated, you know, because everything was curious you were curious and he used to watch like surgical videos. I, I still distinctly remember watching that. And um, that just really sparked my interest in just like, yeah. you know, science and biology. Um, and then thereafter, I just cultivated it, you know, with surrounding myself with, with being with patients and just having my dad mentor me. That's fabulous. That's fabulous. Yes, I've had many interesting conversations with your father. And <laughs> yes, uh, he, he's definitely, definitely a role model. Definitely. Yeah. For sure. Thank you. And Ravneet, tell me, do you also come from a medical family or what, what sparked your interest? Did you have a mentor? So, yeah, my, my, uh, my dad was a physician, but I um, I would say that my mom is is my mentor. My mom is not a physician, but she is all about raising independent daughters. My my sister is a physician as well, and independent, educated. Um, that comes from the family too. It's uh, it's it's my mom, and then you know my uh, my grandparents. Um, so I think that kind of and like you said, they didn't know much. They didn't know any better than medicine or engineer, right? So medicine yeah. was, and 
Uh, and I'm glad because it's, it's somehow that she knew that was my passion. Maybe I didn't know at that time, but uh, I, don't, I don't think I see myself doing anything else. That is so awesome. And you know what? That, that is the contentment, what Natasha was talking about. That is the contentment. You know, you are where you, where you think you need to be, you know, and that, that's great. So uh, breaking the glass ceilings, I know, you know, there's been discussions and many, many debates about uh, women in different spheres, including, you know, traveling to space and manning, a, you know, a space mobile and whatever, you know, but as a female physician, coming up the way you have, all three of you, um, what has been the most gender specific uh, event that you can remember in your, in, during your pathway to where you are now? Uh, let's start with Shruti. Yeah, so um, is it more for the male dominated? roles or is it absolutely i mean whatever you, whatever you think was very gender specific and you're like no why you know why not yeah, yeah. i think um so in hematology i think a lot in medicine um especially when you look at our tumor boards in hematology and oncology um you can just you can just glance at the room and you can see how many male physicians are in there just talking and probably a lot of them have you know like the leadership roles um and the women are more you know probably in pathology or um uh, breast ovarian things like that but they are going more towards like there's transplant physicians female physicians who are directors and um, doing bone marrow transplants and things like that, which is amazing now. Um, but there are still few, few of them. Sure. Um, but still just being in that room full of male dominated um, colleagues, you, you do see that in the tumor boards, especially, but we are, we are getting up there now <laughs> as females. Um, I think that's mainly where I see it. At right. least that's most prevalent. Um, where I work, I'm fortunate to say that my director is female and it is awesome. Um, she absolutely understands what, you know, a woman needs, you know, in terms of just time management, what we have to deal mm -hmm. with um maternity leave um things like that that come up and just getting right back on or you know giving the option of part-time to full-time all of those are very important for women and we're still able to do just as much you know um as our male colleagues so sure sure i mean that i think is coming up in every every field now you know it's not just medicine we're they're realizing that the women, the biggest thing I think they're realizing is that women can multitask. Yes. Uh, you yes. know, which is, which is awesome. You know, they're realizing that, yes, you know what can be done. So let's give her a chance. Yes. And it's changing. It's slow. It's changing. But yes. uh, that's really awesome. So uh, Ravneet, tell me, uh, did you also face uh, some sort of um, gender bias or some sort of a pushback? Um, yeah, I think, I mean, it's there, you know, um, and, uh, and I was going to, I'm going to talk about multitasking, but it's, it's there. Um, I remember, I think only once I actually felt it is when I was graduating from my, um, you know, as a senior at my residency and I, I had both my kids during residency. So I was like Got nonstop it. working and family life, uh, which is really hard to manage. But, um, but it happened simultaneously um, and everything kind of worked out. Uh, but I did, I did um, experience something where I was, um, I was told that I might not pass my boards just because um, statistically, which I don't know where anybody got their statistics from, <laughs> that uh, women who have kids during residency don't pass their boards. And, and I remember taking it as a challenge and, uh, and worried too, you know, because you don't know, you don't know if that's true or, 
And I remember actually my mother-in-law, I remember telling her that. And she's like, there is no way you're not passing your boards. And, and I guess I, you know, you self-doubt, right? So of course I passed my boards. I took my boards maybe four months after I had my second kid. Um, and the men in, in the program who also became dads did not pass their boards. <laughs> so, and, you know, it's just these experiences that you go through and kind of, solidify that there you know i was gonna say it's multitasking women are better and 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 i don't think we have to prove it it's you know we don't we don't women don't need to prove that but but i think knowing that they need to know that oh yes oh yes and i think uh, uh, you know put the male ego aside and everything i think it's time they realize that you know you can stand shoulder to shoulder and you know but just just get get there faster you know and you you can do it you know, and that, and Ravneet, you probably know as well, there are many of your, um, uh, you know, classmates and other friends who were your batch or, you know, in the same year in another school have not achieved as much as you managed to achieve. You know, and you sort of think back and say, why? They had the same opportunities. Why not? You know, it's, it's very difficult. So, Natasha, you are also in a pretty male-dominated speciality nephrology in fact i i was looking it up and there are very few women uh who are you know surgeons or doing nephrology like you are first tell me what made you choose nephrology oh wow i can sit here and talk about nephrology all day <laughs> um nephrology for me uh you know, it's a very cerebral specialty. You deal with a lot of numbers, tr a lot of trends, and patients are never straightforward. They're incredibly complex patients. You have to be balancing one system with the other. And um, I just found it to be very interesting. I love numbers, uh, love looking at electrolytes and the trends and the small deviations and catching them and deciding to do something different. So, um, you know, it's a, a huge math nerd and I think naturally a lot of people that like equations and numbers tend to go into nephrology so that's really why I chose it um, that and also our patient population they're complex but you know they're challenging to manage and they have some of the worst outcomes they have high utilization poor outcomes poor quality of life so it was a challenge for me to get into that field and um, sort of make a difference for the patients that really needed it Wow. Awesome. Yes. Uh, nephrology is, is one of the scary specialities. But, <laughs> but I don't think it's scary. I think it's uh, the water's warm. It's, it's, it's very welcoming. Anybody that's out there that wants to do nephrology, I say, I say go for right. it. <laughs> but that was going to be my second question to you, to, to, the, to the young women who are probably watching us now, current students, as well as, uh, you know, uh, people hoping to apply to AUA. What would you say to them, uh, you know, especially going into a specialty like yours, Natasha, where it is so male dominated? Yeah, I would just say go for it. Um, you know, uh, I think women out there tend to say no, uh, tend to cut yeah. themselves, you know, uh, you know, don't give them the benefit of the doubt. And I would just say, start saying yes, jump into things. If you have an interest, really immerse yourself in there and go for it. You can make any specialty, uh, any field work for you. Uh, yes. It's all about finding the right position, the right environment, uh, the right mentors. So, you know, if you want to be a neurosurgeon, if you want to go into dermatology, if you want to be a nephrologist, just go for it. And, uh, you know, I would say go for it with a full heart, like, <laughs> don't doubt yeah. yourself really really apply yourself yeah. and go for it and yeah um, I think that that's what is difficult you know when you when you get pushed back or you hear so much or you look at the stats then you then you get scared and then you sort of start doubting your own uh, passion or your your focus for that that particular speciality yeah I think the best thing for women in that circumstance is to find a woman who's already doing it find a mentor. Right. There's so many women out there who are doing, you know, um, you know, cardiovascular surgery. You can just go on Twitter and look for a woman in a certain specialty and just message them and say, Hey, can I, you know, buy you a coffee or have a quick chat and ask you about, you know, your, your path. 
Um, so I would just go and start searching for mentors and start, start searching for people who have already done it. That's awesome advice. And that's something uh, at AUA now we've uh, been encouraging a lot is our mentorship. We're yeah. asking our alumni uh, to allow us to connect you with current students who are probably fumbling their way along, uh, trying to decide whether are they making a mistake? Are they, you know, by wanting a certain speciality? Uh, we are definitely asking them. It's called talk to a grad program. And that's exactly what it is. Talk to a grad. Uh, you know, whether it is whether it is about the steps of a step exam or whether it is about residency match, uh, you know, it, it's hard. And you guys know that better than anybody. You know, it, it, it's scary. It's hard. The path is long. Uh, and there are so many places where you can fail. You know, so for them to talk to somebody who will say, you know what? You can do it, and this is the way to do it, and we did it, you know. And just like we were talking before, um, you know, you all came to Antigua, especially Ravneet came to Antigua when, you know, we were still growing, and you know, you still managed. You did everything well. You studied hard. You came back. You did your residency. You started your family. So it's possible, but they need to hear it from you to know that it's possible, you know. And that's really important. So Ravni, tell me, what would be your advice to a young woman looking to apply um, and come into your speciality? So I did pediatrics, which is very, um, I guess, female uh, dominated yes. in a way. Uh, but then there's subspecialties in pediatrics that, you know, one get sometimes can get scared of or... Um, feel as if it's uh, maybe they're going to have some kind of challenges. But I think I think the most important thing that one needs to focus on is is your own goals. You know, you have to set your goals in front of you and then go for those goals. You can't you can't look left or right. You just have to go for it. Um, and then even, it's 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 great if you can find someone who can. Uh, who you can look up to, right. um, who can be as your mentor. If not, then that, that, that's okay because you can be a mentor to someone else five years later, you know? So you, you have to kind of think of it that way that nothing's impossible, but whatever you want to do, you just go for it. There's one thing I do want to say is that I think as uh, most women, we, we think, and we can, we think we can handle it all. Uh, but learning to delegate is is an is a very important task and that and it doesn't mean that you cannot handle it all it just means that you can probably do it better if you learn how to delegate um and you 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 know you'll be more uh you'll reach your goal maybe faster if you actually um, take that approach uh, that's that's one thing i i learned so i wanted to share that's wonderful. Yes, you're absolutely right. And I think I'm also guilty of not uh, learning to delegate. Uh, I, I think my life would be a lot more stable if I did learn how to delegate things. Uh, it, it's hard. It's hard. And uh, yes, and when you're working, and especially like yourself, you're running a business as well as practicing medicine, you have to delegate. It's survival. You have to delegate. So Shruti, I know you went into oncology, you love it. Uh, and then I know you have a small baby at the moment. Uh, so how are you getting the family life balance? Um, I, I'm figuring it out <laughs> <laughs> as we go along. <laughs> but like we've all mentioned, multitasking um, is so important, delegating, and I think the one thing is I've reached out a lot to my colleagues and within the field because um, you see new things and the pace of medicine is going places. Yes. And a lot of the times you can't keep up with things. Um, and that's the balance between home and work for me sometimes because I get a case that I might not be able to handle that might, you know, that is out of my scope sometimes. And keeping that network of community within within your field 
is also so important when you're going into any specialty or any field that you go into, just make sure you keep an open mind and you never know who's going to, and everybody te- sitting next to you can teach you something. So okay. just keep their contacts and keep anybody that you meet, you know, um, as someone who can always, you can reach out to. Um, and that's something I have had no qualms about, okay. <laughs> you know, um, to help out um, so that I can better help them um, and come home and be like, okay, they're in good hands if I need to, or I have gotten the information sometimes, um, where I can help them better. Um, and definitely those are something I've, I've learned even today when I came home, you know, to reach out. That's awesome. Yes. I think uh, that is something all of us are going to have to learn in the future. Like you said, medicine is so fast paced. Uh, and you are going to come up against things which you're like, oh my God, now what do I do? I, I really don't know. And, you know, I need, so, I need to talk to somebody, uh, you know, and this is, this is very important. And networking, as we all know, is what makes the world go round. At the end of the day, you know, it's, I mean, I, I'm a total, total supporter of networking uh, because I, I think, you know, having someone at the end of the phone, I can pick up and say, hey, listen, I met you here, but, you know, I had a question for you. You know, can you give me an answer? It, it, it works. Nine times out of 10, I get, the, I get the answer I need, you know? So that's, that's fabulous. So let me, let me ask you, what is the one piece of advice you wish you had been given before you started medical school? Shruti? I think it's... Um, I think it's having a lot of patience to achieve your goals um, because it takes time and there's going to be very long days where you might feel like you didn't, it was a long day, but you didn't achieve anything. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You, you know, you might just be exhausted with you having a kid and, but you might've had that one conversation with a patient that really helped them that you might have just been like, okay, I had that one conversation, but it took a long time. You know, like, I think having patience throughout your journey and um, keeping that peace of mind to say and that your end goal is still there, but it's just going to take some time. Right. Yes, I I guess uh, it's very easy as well, like you said, to lose focus. Uh, yeah. you know, and to think, oh my God, am I doing the right thing? Did I make the right decision to do this? Yes. You know, it, it, it is difficult. So Natasha, let me ask you a small twist to that question. What is the one thing you think um, female uh, to be doctors need to ask themselves? Um, you know, uh, what, what, what do you think would be the most important thing that they need to ask themselves before they set out in your path? You know, female or not female, I think anyone before they go to medical school needs to really sit down and evaluate why you're going. Um, Are you going because I know, Par, you mentioned people are watching Grey's Anatomy and you think that's the lifestyle. (laughs) Are you going because you want to drive a Porsche? Uh, What is the real reason why you're going? And ask yourself, where does your passion lie? Uh, You know, I would... I would start there. I think that's a really important question before you you go into medical school because it is a huge commitment. Right. It's time commitment. You um, during the process of residency and uh, medical school, you'll miss out on a lot of life events, um, not just your own, but of other people. Yeah. You know, yeah. in your friendship circle, it's a very big commitment. So you have to ask yourself, where do my passions lie? Is it going to medical school, and then take it from there. Ravneet, what would your advice be? Uh, so I I think that I never heard from anyone, uh, but I it's it's good to hear it sometimes that you're starting med school, you're choosing this, and this is your life. This is 
the most important part of your life. Um, and you might not be able to have a life outside of medicine, uh, you know, just because you're not, it's, it's a profession. It's not a job, right? It's, it's day and night. You're in it. Your entire twenties is gone in books, which, which, which is good, which is amazing. Um, but you, one has to be mentally prepared for that. And, uh, and, and that needs to be their choosing. Right, right. You're absolutely right. You know, and we used to have a, a very senior director of admissions uh, who actually trained me or rather I, I used to pick his brains a lot uh, because he was a wealth of knowledge. And one of the things I used to hear him telling prospective students was, are you prepared to uh, admit that you don't have a life for the next 10 years uh, that you're going to go to med school and beyond? And I always just look at him and say, don't say that because they don't, they, they don't want to go to med school. They're going to get scared. And he was like, no, that is the reality of it. You know, you want to be a great doctor. You want to be a leader. That's it. That's the reality. And as I grew in the job, I realized he was absolutely right. Like, just, just like you said, and like Natasha said, you give up on life events. You give up on family events. Uh, you literally give up on life, you know, as a normal human being, you're, you're in your books, you're in your hospital, you're in, you know, that sort of an atmosphere. And yes, it's a, it's a huge commitment personally, financially, uh, everything, everything. It's scary, but that's how it is. Now with COVID, um, you know, all our lives have changed and what we thought was normal is really not normal anymore. Uh, and I don't even know whether we're going to come back to what we knew as normal. Uh, things have changed. People's, people's outlook has changed. Uh, and we don't even know if this COVID is going anywhere. So, you know, we don't even know what we're going to be doing. What, um, what, what would your advice be to um, an intern or uh, 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 someone doing rotations under you during these circumstances? Natasha? Yeah, uh, you know, internship and doing rotations is already so difficult without COVID. Um, you know, it's a big time commitment um, and, you know, you're learning a lot. Um, I would just say to the people, you know, if I, if I were still in the hospital setting and dealing with trainees, um, I would just say relax, take a deep breath, take it all in, you know, hopefully COVID's not going to last forever, <laughs> even though we're in the, <laughs> in the thick of things, right. uh, especially here in Florida. Um, but yeah. I would just, you know, keep going and take a step back to reevaluate your passions, uh, take a step back to reflect even, and take a moment to really take care of yourself. Uh, during this time, this is a really crazy time where we are you know, especially in the hospital, I know because my sister is a uh, hospitalist and she's seeing right. actually a lot more patients than she should be seeing on a census. Um, it's really a, a difficult time to be practicing and you can really get caught up in the revolving door of going to the hospital, seeing patients, getting everything in. And you just have to take a moment and take care of yourself and really uh, reevaluate where you're at um, with everything and take a mental health day also, really important. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, you know, I totally hear you because last year in the middle of all this pandemic, I was constantly calling, uh, you know, our alumni, especially the ones I knew whose hospitals were really, uh, you know, in the middle of it. And uh, I know I could hear it in their voices. You know, yeah. I could hear the stress. I could literally he almost hear the tears, you know, yeah. in their voices. And they were not going home for days on end. Uh, especially the emergency medicine doctors, they were not going home for days on end. They hadn't seen their family for months. Uh, it, it wasn't a happy situation. Now, Ravneet, um, as a pediatrician, I know, uh, you know, you're getting asked questions, first of all, about the, uh, you know, the vaccine for the children. And then about from the parents, I'm sure you're getting questions. What would your advice be that, uh, you know, where are we going? What are we doing? Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's tough. Um, you know, at an urgent care, when you 
you um, see patients on walk-in basis, right? And then your your goal was to, you know, our, my goal was um, an urgent care to um, save unnecessary ER visits. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then you have all these COVID patients who are not sick, and uh, but they just need COVID diagnosis uh, or ruling it out. Um, and then you have to stand true to your words to the community that were here for that. So that was definitely a huge challenge. And then you have to make sure your staff is safe, you're safe. Um, you know, I quarantined, I think a gazillion times myself away from my family. So it was tough, but thanks to the vaccine, things are better. We believe in science and uh, masking works. We yes. we can test it every, we test it every day. I test it every day yes. and it, it works. Um, so, but then now we're juggling schools are open. Um, you know, every cough, sneeze needs, needs a negative COVID or, a, or a note. So trying to just put some medical sense in all of that. And then as a physician, your, your biggest challenge is that your patients are looking at you, you know, they're looking for advice. They're looking for, um, support. They're looking, f- uh, for, for some kind of, um, sense full talk. And um, in these tough times, right? So um, I think just kind of knowing that they're, you're, you're there to, to help them. You know, people are agitated. People are, um, people are on their last nerves these days. I'm sure everyone's noticing that. Uh, but just knowing that what, what you have as a physician um, is is a lot of power and you're using that power in a, in 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 a good way right in in the way that we took our oath for that we're here for them and then just kind of putting some medical sense like ev- anytime i'm confused i just go back to what science is and that and and that helps and i think that's what the community needs right now um from physicians from interns um it's easy to you know, it's easy to fluster, it's easy to get scared, but just, you know, there's, there's medical experts out there that are guiding us and then just believing in them and, and, uh, you know, going, going your way. Yes. I think it's, it's been a scary time for everybody. And I'm sure anyone with small kids, including Shruti, you're, you're always worried, you know, what, what, what are we doing? What, you know, are are we on the right path? Is this the right thing that we should be doing? As a, as a parent, as a doctor, you know, is this what we should be doing? Uh, it's scary. So Shruti, I know, um, you know, your, your specialty is oncology and that's great, but COVID has affected every, every specialty, you know? So, and I'm sure you're seeing patients who are immunocompromised, who are on chemotherapy, who are, you know, uh, with COVID and whatever. You're in a hospital setting how how are the the interns and the residents or the the rotate the students who are there for rotation how are they coping with it they um they are being pulled <laughs> to every direction possible um if a, a staff or one of the senior fellows gets pulled because they have to quarantine the second year fellow is pulled to do what they have to do and goes down the 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 chain, the food chain, you know. Um, it is a lot of sacrifice um, that a lot of them are making and we try our best to understand. And a lot of the physicians, we all try to pick up, you know, as much as possible because we know we've been there right? Like we've been there and it's, we were interns at one point, everybody was an intern. So we have to realize that we need to take the attending hat off and be like, okay, they need to go home. They, they have a new baby probably, and they need that time to be with their baby. And, and at times just being empathetic towards them and saying that, Hey, okay, I will take on the extra patient or I will take on this, this weekend, just go home, you know, is something that I tend to do at times. That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. I, I, I really hope a lot of my 
senior doctors are listening to you because I think they could they, they need a page out of your book. They really do. But yes, no, I I get it. I mean, it's scary. It's scary for everybody, and I'm sure it's very scary for the younger the younger crew. You know, especially if you're a, you're a you know doing rotations, you're a fourth fourth year or third year. I I'm sure you're petrified. You know, what happens if I get COVID and what is this COVID and, you know, how do we handle it? And yes, science is there. The vaccine, fortunately, is there and it's offering some amount of protection. But we're still scared. I'm still scared. I'm, I'm vaccinated, but I'm still scared. You know, I live I live in a little bubble, as I call myself, in a little bubble, you know, and I'm very scared about where I'm going, who I'm meeting. Uh, it's not worth the risk. It's just but as a doctor, you don't have that choice. You know, you have to see all the patients who come in front of you, even if they're asymptomatic and which you're not going to know about, you still have to treat them, you know, and it's, it's, it's very scary. It's, it's, it's uh, uh, I don't know if this is a good time to be in medicine, let's put it that way, <laughs> or in any, any other field for that matter. But yes, uh, because one of the things I hear from students, and this has new residents or students who are in the third and fourth SEM is, oh, ma'am, is it safe to go for rotations? And strangely many of our hospitals where we have rotations wanted more of our students uh and that is just like how you said they needed they needed human bodies to take over the load of the incoming patients you know of you know simple simple things like you know monitoring them whatever it is but they wanted students we were actually surprised we thought that they would cancel rotations uh, uh but they didn't they kept asking for more, which, of course, you know, the students were those who were willing to go. Obviously, nobody was being pressured, but those who were willing to go were happy to go because I think it's a huge learning curve for all of you. You know, even for the senior doctors, it's been a huge learning curve. Now, we're coming down to, you know, I'm going to start winding up. Now, tell me if there's anything that you feel you would like students and pa parents and current students listening to you to keep in mind as they go forward uh words of advice things they they really which you you wish you somebody had told you when you were you know in med school doing basic sciences you wish somebody had told you about this uh you know anything at all any any not necessarily advice but even if it is something that you know you wish oh my god i wish somebody had told me this when i was going through med school you know sort of a thing Natasha. Sure. Um, one would be, I know I have, I've already mentioned this, but um, I wish someone told me in medical school and in residency and in fellowship to relax, <laughs> take a moment to take it all in. I think you get so caught up in, I'm in medical school. I have to take step one. After I take step one, I have to do this and then do that and do that. And you're always sort of gunning for the next step. And it's just about sort of, marinating in the moment and right. you know and really um giving yourself kudos for how far you've come um with that also um you know i also would say one thing that i wish people told me is that failure is not a bad thing um you know there have been times where i've had to um you know take a different path there have been times where i have failed um having done well on a test for example and it's not the end of the world. Um, and so failure is not a bad thing. You always learn from it. You always come back stronger and take a moment to really marinate in the moment. Um, and yeah, those were, those would be two things. Oh, another thing that I would also say is um, nurture your relationships. Right. Um, you tend to get into this um, mentality or mindset of like, I have to do this. I have to be here. If you need to take a weekend to go to your best friend's wedding, or if you need to just, uh, you know, uh, jump on a phone call with, you know, with close individuals around you, just nurture those relationships because by the time you get done and you look back, you don't, you don't want to, um, yes. you don't want to feel like anything is strained. You know what I mean? And you don't want to have to come back uh, to working towards things. So I, I would say those three pieces of advice I, I wish I knew. Well, would you say that, um, I know medical school is a lot of pressure, more ways than one, also with the academics. Would you say that uh, doing this sort of, uh, you know, taking time out, you know, nurturing relationships, as you call it, uh, doing anything? I mean, like Antigua, of course, you know, we have enough sports to take our mind off everything. 
uh, even the beaches are beautiful. Would you say that that probably would help you do better? Yeah, um, you know, if it comes down to self care and you enjoy going to the beach or um, being in an environment such as Antigua, yeah, absolutely. And Antigua is a beautiful place to do medical school. I mean, it's a unique experience yes. for sure. Yes. Um, you know, it's not living like in the states, and you you get to experience another culture, another country. Um, and for me, that was really exciting because on the weekends I would say, all right, let's go to the other side of the island and explore Devil's Bridge or um, go take a hike or go check out this other beach. So anything to help you unwind, anything to help you get through the, the grueling classes and the tests. Yeah, I say go for it. Okay. Yes, Devil's Bridge. I love that part of Antigua. <laughs> I love Devil's Bridge. Yeah. But Ravneet, what, what would you say? So, um, I mean, I agree with Natasha completely. Um, it's, it's good to unwind and, but also to know that, you know, that that's, that's, it's medicine. You chose it. That's your focus, right? Your, your, um, you focus on your, your path and, um, and then enjoy it. I mean, the, I think the only reason one can be successful in anything they can do, a physician, not a physician, or um, like nephrology or oncology, uh, you will only do well if you, if you love what you do, right? And if, if that is the case, um, then focus just comes automatically. Um, so focusing, in, focusing on what you want out of it is, um, is, is what's going to help you because you're only getting what you want out of things, right? So that's right. I think knowing um, that you chose to do medicine and it's going to require a lot out of you and it's okay because that's what you like to do. I think just having, thinking of it in, in a positive way rather than a stressful way that, you know, I'm, this is, this is a lot. I have an exam. I have to study a lot or um, I want to do neurosurgery and there's no other uh, woman in neurosurgery. Um, it's okay. You choose to do it and you just take your, you know, one step at a time. Right, right, right. And yes, the, the pressure is always there because, you know, you need to match. You need to, you know, start repaying your student loans. Uh, the pressure is always there. So Shruti, what would your take be on this? Um, I was going to say this, I agree with everybody, um, focus on your path, but don't kill yourself along the way, you know, um, I think there's, I found it difficult when I had days that were just very hard and communicate, talk to people, make sure that you, you always keep talking, don't isolate yourself um, during the hard times when you're on these the nights were so difficult when we were, you know, because you didn't have anybody to talk to and the days would just go by, you would try to sleep, but keep talking to people, surround yourself with people and um, people with the same goals as you, right? So that you have the leisure times um, where you share the same interests um, and your goals are the same. And you you should focus on self-care because that's going to make you achieve your goals faster right. and you'll be happy along the way, you know, getting to your goals. Um, and you'll be truly content with the end result. Um, it's all, a, it's, it's a balance. Um, there's going to be times where it's going to be very rough, but just keep talking to someone because that's very important. You know, family mm -hmm. members are your biggest support, yes. your friends, um, they're all there to just be your cheer cheerleaders. So, you know, there are going to be times where you're going to just be on the grind and you you definitely just communicate. So. Yes, I think a support system is uh, it's just, it's essential going through life, but I think more so when you're in such a stressful uh, area. Now, I thought I was done with all the questions that came in, but suddenly I have two more questions. And one of them is, uh, Shruti, for you, What's the most important you think a straight out of medical school starting residency in the COVID pandemic student should know? 
straight out of residency into no straight out of med school going into residency going into residency um you're definitely going to dedicate a lot of time and you are going to be pulled as an intern into long hours <laughs> you know um but like we said it's it's the end goal right um this is also the time to use as an opportunity to learn because covid's here to stay and covid complications are here to stay and they're going to be in the books and they're going to be in the tests in the future um so you might as well be in it to be like hey i witnessed that or i was there for that diagnosis and you, this is an opportunity that you can learn and really be there for the people who can't have their family members be there right this is the time that you're you're going to be the biggest part of someone's life yeah. um and that's what you signed up for as a physician right that's the biggest impact that you're going to have is be their hero and this is your time to shine so it does mean that you're going to put in a little bit more effort and time but it's so much important for the other person on the other side okay very resounding advice absolutely because that is the one thing that all of us as patients want we want our doctor to listen to us to you know uh, give some time to us not look at his watch you have seven seven minutes to tell me your entire life history uh, you know that that puts me off faster than anything i can think of but yes and now the next question has come through actually for natasha um, have you ever been treated differently by a male counterpart because he felt challenged <laughs> possibly well, probably so of course <laughs> um yeah definitely have been treated differently by uh, a male ca counterpart i think it's um as i've gotten older i've realized it's all about delivery um whenever you talk to anyone male or female if you're asking them about a particular you know pathophysiology or asking them about why they decided to go for a particular treatment make sure you ask it in an inclusive way. Right. right. <laughs> I've had some growing up to do in that, in that regard, but of course, you know, if you, um, if you challenge someone or if they feel like they're being challenged, uh, you know, it's, it's going to put you in a, in a difficult position. So it's all about delivery, always being compassionate and inclusive to the other individual and understanding sort of where they're coming from before you jump to conclusions. Um, but you will learn that on the way of, uh, of through medical school into, into rotations and then uh, into residency. I'm sure. I mean, I, it's a learning curve for everybody. And I think it's also a, a learning curve for the male doctors uh, that they have to share their um, limelight and the stage uh, with, uh, with a woman doctor who's probably equally, if not more qualified. So it, it's a learning curve. It's a learning curve. And I think, uh, I, I know it's, it's scary for some, some people as they go into med school, they're like, oh my God, you know, am I going to be treated like a, like a subservient, even if I've done my five years of med school, you know, how do I stand up for myself? And yes, there may be people who can stand up for themselves and there may be those who can't for just not their personality. And, you know, they just get trodden upon all the time. We see it all the time. We see it all the time. So yeah. So first of all, let me thank the three of you. I know I've pulled you all away from various uh, tasks, uh, Shruti from your baby, Natasha from her meeting, and Ravneet from also her, her family time. And I really appreciate it. Uh, AUA, you know, the, the one thing about AUA is we like to think of ourselves as family, um, which is why I'm sure some of you have got random calls from me asking about uh, random things. Uh, but this is, this is how AUA has been. And I'm, I'm hoping it'll continue. We still like to think of you as our students and, uh, you know, call upon you to help us like this support or call upon you. If we have an issue with somebody in your area, if we have a student who's having an issue and I, you know, I pick up the phone and say, Hey, Ravneet, listen, can you just talk to this girl? I mean, you know, she's, you know, I, I think she needs someone to talk to. Um, and this has happened and I'm very happy to say that. Nine times out of 10, I've got a very positive response. 
um, you know, and generally, I, if you don't return my call, I call you back again. So you know, I don't let go. Um, as again, some of the male students are finding out, male grads are finding out, I don't, I don't let go, uh, you know. But um, again, let me, let me em emphasize how proud we are of uh, all of you women doctors who are really breaking down ceilings, going into uh, areas which even five or 10 years ago was, you know, it was inconceivable that you could have a female doctor in that position. And all we can do is cheer you on, you know, and by default, we also glow in your achievements. Uh, like Ravneet, your uh, achievement is actually, I shared it with the marketing team today and they were so excited. And they were like, oh my God, can we post this? Can we do this? Can we do that? I said, okay, make a list, send it to Navneet. If she's okay with it, you can do whatever. You know, just, just make a list first. But definitely, you know, they're going to post it on Facebook because it, it's an achievement. And for us as a young school, it's a huge achievement. You know, and we're really, really proud of you. So once again, let me thank you all. And let me thank the audience who have logged in. There's actually been quite a few eyeballs today. Um, who have been listening to all your words, and I hope they have been motivated and they have been pumped up that, you know what, they did it, we can do it. You know, and obviously AUA is here to support you in whatever way we can. Um, and generally, if we can't, we will find you a resource which can help you. And this time of COVID, we all are trying to work together, keep all our heads uh, above water and make sure the, you know, the school delivers quality as it always does. So great, thank you very much. And I thank our, our in-house marketing team who have uh, helped me put this together. And uh, I don't think, I, I think I've covered all the questions. So I don't think I've left anything out. If there are any questions we did not answer, please just email it to us and I will make sure that you get a response. Thank you very much, everybody. Good night. <laughs>